Right, here I am again with a rework of my video for extracting tempo maps from audio that's been recorded without a metronome. After I posted the original uh, thread on the Cakewalk forums, uh, S. Corey kindly pointed out that I was an idiot. Although he uh, actually put it a bit better than that. But anyway, he pointed out that it was a much easier way of doing it, which I had sort of played around with and couldn't get it to work for some reason. Uh, and then uh, between himself and B Video, I've discovered uh, what I was doing wrong. And so I'm going to show uh, how to achieve the same thing now much easier, uh, much more accurately, more to the point, uh, but still have the actual project uh, stay with the original tempo feel. So the changes are still there, but I still have a grid to work with, which was always the ultimate aim of this exercise anyway. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, change to the audio snap or audio transients, press the middle mouse button here, uh, bring up audio transients, as you can see that's selected that there, uh, select the clip and bring up the audio snap palette by pressing A. Uh, and now what I want to do here is edit the clip map. So click on that, as you can see at the top here, that changes to the clip map editor. Just going to uh, zoom in for you there. Right, hopefully that's a little bit better. You can see that now. Now, where I was going wrong before is uh, the average tempo, as I'd already sorted out that that was actually incorrect. So I'm just going to change that to 154. That's much closer. Now, where I was going wrong before, and I was actually trying to drag 2 1, because uh, if I just play this for a second, you'll see what I mean. That beat there is the actual uh, first beat of the second measure because of this short. A uh, couple of snare come kick flams here. I was trying to add 2 1 back in time to there, which isn't possible to do. Uh, and even splitting the clip and hiding transients, it still made it impossible. But uh, as this Corey kindly pointed out, what I can do is take 1 1 and drag that forward to there to make that the first beat. Now, when I first done this, I was still having problems uh, with error messages when I tried to extract the beat uh, or the, set the, the project timing from the clip. And the reason I've discovered for that is, be, is all to do with this short little flam bit at the start here. What I need to do is to drag this uh, 04, which I didn't think it could actually exist in Sona, to there. Come across. There we go. Uh, and then I can drag 03 there. And I end up with zero 02, so I now have a zero 01. What I was doing before was leaving the zero 04 there, and it kept getting an invalid beat measure uh, message. And that's basically, presumably, because uh, zero 01 never existed as far as it's concerned, so it couldn't actually extract the map. Anyway, so that's quite important for, for this particular project. It probably wouldn't come across that on a normal project that started with just a straight uh, first beat, possibly. But anyway... Uh, that's that sorted. Now what I'm going to do is start playing the project, go through and find out where it's drifted away. Because as you see, having shifted this has already moved a lot of the transient markers. So that's saving a lot of markers to the transients. So that's already saved a lot of time, but I'm not going to bore you to death with that. I'm going to start playing it, put the video on pause, and I'll come back to it when I've found some more markers to move. Okay, so here we are... Uh, back uh, at bar 24 now and we you can see 23 sort of drifting a little bit away there so I'm just going to grab 24 and move that and as I do that you can see that the markers around it all move in time to go with it I'm just going to carry on through that's the first one I've found since there so again thanks to this uh, method I've already saved myself quite a bit of time just going to put you on pause again while I uh, search and again, here we are now, up bar 52, 53, 54, drifted quite away. So I'm going to grab 53, drag it up. And again, you can see it goes red to show that it's locked into place for that transient. But more importantly, it shifts a lot of the others around. So I haven't got to do as many uh, find and moves as another one I see is drifting it there slightly. Just move that across. Uh, and as you can see, it's already much quicker. I've gone from having uh, several 
places I, I I clicked on it manually before to actually just four or five so far. I'm already 60 measures through, which is getting towards the end of the song. Just going to finish uh, that off and then we'll go on to the next. OK, so here we are back. I've actually finished now. There wasn't uh, actually that many more to do. So I've probably done four or five moves or possibly six all the way through this clip. Uh, and now that's done. We're going to just go down here, and this is the bit where I had wrong before, but thanks to B Video, uh, I had that on clip because I thought trying to extract the uh, timing from the clip was the right thing to do. I actually wanted to do it by the measure to put in all of the changes. Uh, and so now I just click on Set Project from Clip. As you can see, that jumped across and basically has extracted that timing information. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll just get my tempo view across from my second monitor. Uh, there we go you can see that now it's extracted that information lots of tempo changes but it's all around about the 154 155 mark uh, does go up a little bit towards the end but that is the exact information that I wanted uh, I wanted the time from there and as you can see that's a lot quicker than before so once again thanks very much S. Corey for pointing out that uh, I made hard work of what should have been quite an easy job uh, and also to be video for putting the final piece of the jigsaw into place and anyway I hope that helps somebody else because uh, that's a lot easier than the way I was doing it. Thanks.